Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host. Um, we're here at our 90 in Logan, Utah, Cache Valley. And uh, it's been an interesting uh, couple of days. Um, one thing we went, we saw that was really cool the other day in Nebraska, we were going, uh, we were in like central Nebraska, like between Grand Island and Kearney. And uh, we saw, I mean, honestly, it felt like there was a, uh, we saw, or I saw, cause I wasn't driving, Tom was actually driving and we'll get to that in a minute, but I felt like I saw about 10,000 Sandhill Cranes. And if you don't know what they look like, they look like cranes, right? It's kind of tall, like a skinny, tallish bird. Um, but they're they're kind of gray, like a haze gray color. But it just so happens that Kearney, um, Nebraska, is the Sand Hill capital of the world. Now they're self-proclaimed. There might be some more other places. But I saw probably 20 really large flocks of sandhill cranes like hundreds per flock and they were just everywhere um, right near right near i-80 so it was kind of cool i'd never seen that many before so that was kind of interesting um, wyoming was uh was a breeze to get across although it was breezy another pile up uh, this time in pennsylvania on i-81 Closed the high I I eighty one north I think closed the highway from exit one sixteen up to one nineteen. By the way, one nineteen. If you don't recognize that number, I believe that's the exit number for the Walmart distribution, the Hazelton Walmart distribution center. So that'll give you an idea. And it was snow squalls and fog, and of you know twenty vehicles. You know winter's not over. We keep seeing you know. I mean, you see it, right? Like fog, inclement weather, people are just still on, on the power and, and you know, it doesn't, it's just no bueno, it doesn't work out well. So anyway, but so I, I shot a couple of videos the other day in Nebraska and kind of got Tom's impression of his first driving on the road. And uh, yeah, so take, take a look at those and I'll be back with you in a second. Is on. So set is also on the cruise. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was. You just got to get used to the where the truck fits in the lane too. Tom's driving. How are you, how are you doing? Are you comfortable? I'm okay. All right. We're in Nebraska. So you went 256 miles today. How do you feel? I thought it was 257, but otherwise I'm fine. No, it was 256. Point three. I checked. So you drove some regular highway with crossroads, yes. traffic lights. You went through Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska, first time ever. Yep. Go Huskers. Shut up. Go Hawkeyes. Um, and uh, then I don't know, like I don't know, hundred and change on I eighty. I eighty. Heading west. All right. So, but you said, what was your reaction to that? Um, when you asked if I was, how I was feeling, I said, well, mentally a little bit tired, but not so much physically. It's, it's demanding mentally to drive a truck. It really is. So that doesn't surprise me because you're trying to take in, and I'm telling you stuff, you're trying to take in stuff mm -hmm. and yeah, it's a, it's a big job. So, all right, well, good job because you got... You got us out of a loves and into a loves and and in between there's, loves, there's love everywhere there's love everywhere yeah and yeah so we arrived in one piece so good job all right, all right. now don't get cocky though far from it all right thanks okay so let's let's talk about the subject matter here you know um psd instructors are not getting paid what they deserve now as you know, there's there was a F, FMCSA chain rule change that basically said 
you can't be a CDL instructor if you don't have at least two years of commercial, you know, vehicle driving experience at the level that you're trying to teach. And so there's a shortage, an even more acute shortage maybe, of CDL instructors um, at Prime. Now, I have in the past voiced an opinion that I wasn't a big fan of Prime's training program on the PSD side. I don't have any problem with TNT, but I really don't like the setup on PSD. But here's what I especially don't like. The PSD compensation for instructors has basically not changed for a long time. A long time. And I have a service that I'm selling to Prime. Okay? And I'm not getting paid enough for that service. And so my question is, why am I doing this? Because I got a driver who is capable and competent, but is really, really new at this. And so he, I'm the only one in the truck with a commercial driver's license. So if he does something wrong, there's a very good chance that my license will be impacted. And, you know, on top of that, they want me to still run loads so basically I'm going through 14 hours of time a day, but I'm not really, I, I'm making no more on the load than I would make by driving it myself. Because honestly, you know, the, the few hours and, you know, and the integration of the, of the student is, that, is not, you know, it, it, it's, it's a little bit of value because there's just some miles being run, but it's also a lot, it's still a, a burden of work for me. And, you know, they're not gonna handle the truck the way I can, or they're not gonna drive as fast as I can for two reasons. One is because they probably don't want to, but the second is I don't want them to. And, you know, it's not like I'm just running across, you know, Texas where it's pretty flat and the weather's okay. I just ran through, you know, across Nebraska, into Wyoming, and, th and you know, through, everybody knows that, what that's like, and then up and down all over in Utah to get into this valley to make this delivery. And so, it is, it is an opportunity to train, but you don't have to be good at descending hills to pass a CDL test. The reason I know that is because I wasn't. I never went down any hills. I never drove outside of the city of Phoenix before my CDL test. I drove in an area that was maybe at the most five miles from the terminal with a guy that had like three million miles on the road. So my, you know, I'm doing something for a pittance and Prime really needs to just step up. They need to acknowledge the fact that my CDL and my experience is worth more now than it was six months ago. Because there are a lot of people at Prime, a lot of people, that do not qualify to be a CDL instructor. And there are also a lot of people that do, that just won't do it. So I'm calling on Prime, and I mean now. Like, I don't wanna wait another week to get paid more because it's really not worth it. It really isn't. Um, I like my student. I, you know, and I've actually committed to do two more PSD students, but I, you know, I kind of got to, I, I got to look at that. You know, it's a lot of responsibility for no money. And, you know, the idea that, oh, there's this follow on, you know, if they, if they trifecta, if they do this, if they do that, that would all be fine if they said, hey, you take a couple of students and you, and we'll put you up in, in, you know, in the hotel in Springfield, we'll feed you for free and we'll fuel your truck. And all we need you to do is take about three weeks and get two students through the CDL licensure process, right? 
like kind of like temporary assigned duty if you're if you're a person that's been in the military you kind of know what I'm talking about there but that's that's really you know that would be a program I could get on board with I I really don't like the PSD program but I feel bad because there's so many people that I'm pretty sure will be good drivers and good drivers at prime that want to come here but prime needs to you know they need to pay for quality instructors the government changed the rules it's just like practicing law it used to be you didn't have to have a license to practice law so it was just like you know some smart guys with wigs well that changed at some point and so then getting a license to practice law was hard but then you got paid more than a guy that just did you know house painting right because you didn't need a license to paint a house so I have a license and experience level that's more valuable than I'm getting compensated for and I'm not and I'm and I'm not saying for a second that prime's a bad company I'm not saying for a second that I don't you know like my students um, but what I'm saying is prime needs to either change the program and you know Tom and I were talking about Tom's an accountant he's a bean counter we were talking about it. I said what if they just said okay we'll pay you 1500 a week you come for three weeks we put you up like I was saying earlier just those kind of conditions and you just train right you don't have you don't have to put a ton of miles on your truck you just train and then you know you, you you work 12 hours a day you go back you watch some TV get a get a free meal at the, at the cafe and it's all good right and you're not gonna feel like hey I'm out here in the middle of you know nowhere with a person who doesn't even have a license it's just you know it's it's almost like I got not to you know not to put too fine a point on but it's almost like I got a kid with me right but it's a kid that I, I'm supposed to train somehow. And, you know, I went through the process. I had a CDP and somebody was willing to train me. But they went home every night. And there was a three-week program. And guess what? Right on schedule, I got my CDL. Then I went on the road with a trainer. So I think the pay, I think my pay is maybe, it's like 400 for the first week and then 300 for the next three weeks, subsequent weeks. I think it should be at least 500 a week, right off the bat, right from Jump Street. And then all those other things should still be a part of it. But, you know, I could, I could have somebody on my truck for two weeks, make 700 bucks, right, total, plus whatever I, if, if I could run a load, and by the way, this this part of the job, I just realized, I mean, I'm already kind of in trouble on this. My 70 hour clock has been decimated. Um, but anyway, um, because of, you know, driving and then letting them drive where I still have to be on duty. So I just, I just think there's not enough compensation here. I, I, I think it doesn't respect the fact that there's a, a very limited supply of people that are qualified and willing to do this job at Prime. So I'm I'm going to send a message to the DAB. I've already spoken to my my fleet manager, and you know I'm not going to. If you've been around me for any period of time, if you know me, I'm I'm not going to let it go. I'll probably I'm going to start emailing people. So, and I think we're going to be here at this stupid receiver for quite some time. But anyway, uh, be safe. It's still winter time. You're still required to carry chains in a lot of places. Um, yeah, and and so, you know. And by the way, I, I just want to say my trainee, my trainee is, Tom is doing great. He's um, he's learning. He'll become more confident. I'll be more confident in him. And um, and he even he even did an alley dock kind of sorta because we had to turn around and he was driving. I was like, all right, well, pull in here and back in those back in one of those parking, sp you know. And so that was really his first time doing that in like real real life. How'd that feel? It was an it was an adventure. 
He said, and it was an adventure. That's code for, man, that sucked. And you were like bossing me around. So anyway, but he's, 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 he didn't have anything. So there you go. That's a win. Anyway, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.